taking part in uh, this is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, um, where different presentations uh, will take place um, to remember this solemn, sad but day of um, what happened all these years ago in Europe and try to remember and to be um, very clear that uh, remembering is one way of learning about the past and learning from lessons and hope that we learn from the evil of the past and uh, never be uh, repeated again. I particularly, I am here to tell the story of Dimitar Peshev, one of the most dignified Bulgarians of the 20th century. I have a particular honor to say that, as I myself come from Bulgaria, although I left Bulgaria a long time ago, but my heart is still in this part of the world, the wider Balkans. Uh, and this is somebody who sadly is less known in Bulgaria than in other countries, like in the United States and Israel. I've come, come from London and uh, it was a pleasure to come here to respond to the invitation um, of the organizers of this event, the University of Jakova and the wider network of um, uh, remembrance of the Holocaust Remembrance Day uh, because Bulgaria I uh, culturally still feel very strong sympathies with even if I left it a long time ago, decades ago. Um, has a story to tell that is still not known to the wider world but it's little known inside Bulgaria. Also the story of Dimitar Peshev, the man who um, was behind the saving of uh, more than 50,000 human beings from Bulgaria, the Jewish population of Bulgaria, uh, which was facing deportation and extermination in camps. Uh, I've made, um, together with my wife, we made uh, a documentary, short documentary about Dimitar Peshev. We were very lucky to, um, to have filmed his niece, who was still with us, and sadly he, he is not um, with us anymore, but, but I'm very glad that we managed to film her. And uh, this is the story of Dimitar Pesha based on how she remembers her beloved uncle. 44-та година сравнително бях по-малка и тогава добре помня нали, преврата, който стана на 9 септември, взимането на властта, арестуването на всички, които са били в Народното събрание и в Министерския съвет, съденето им и затвора след. Your Excellency Ambassador Gujev, dear citizens of Kosovo, dear friends, I'm deeply touched to be here today. I've come from London for this event, London where I've lived for more than 30 years. And it's an honor to be here on Remembrance Day. One more reason for that is because uh, this is organized by a university named after Fehmi Agani. Somebody I remember from my days of journalism. I worked as a BBC journalist for many years. And those were the miserable, wintry, cold days of 1999 at the Rambouillet talks. Very few people remember, but you probably remember. If you were not around, your parents probably will tell you. Uh, when uh, Mr. Ghani was the visionary of your uh, emerging state, which the other side refused to recognize. But they were there, they were forced to talk to each other, and he was a tough negotiator. He was hoping to get the document signed. In the end, there was, there was a document signed outside Paris in, in an old castle. Um, it was a document that the other side re refused to recognize. And continued committing and preparing massacres while diplomacy was underway. But here we are, on a, on a day like this, we remember Mr. Ghani, because 11 years later, you had your independence. And that was probably the first act of diplomacy of the emerging state. And um, it's very important to remember that, because yesterday, I was very moved, once more I used that word, which I rarely use, I was very moved when I saw um, sites of massacres here in your, in your town. As we were driving through and uh, I saw streets where civilians were taken out of their homes and shot point blank. 
And it's, it's very poignant that on this day, when we remember the Holocaust, we remember other acts of inhumanity. Because what makes us human is the act to remember, or at least we try. What we don't know, we piece together from others. And this is why it's so important to record the memories of witnesses, first-hand witnesses. And this is what will bring us now to why I'm here and why I decided to come here. Because I would like to honor one, I would say even probably the most distinguished, dignified Bulgarian of the 20th century, Dimitar Peshev. Uh, together with my wife and partner in those projects, Janet Barry, we started recording stories of, uh, of uh, eyewitnesses, of people who are still around. It's very important for education also to catch those people while you still can. Uh, at least a collection of stories firsthand, and then put them together and give them to those people who, who were not born or who, who didn't have the tools to remember that. So we, um, one of the stories, we, we have a, a, a website, but we are, we are now registered in Bulgaria as a, as a society, cultural society, and I'm pleased to say that those videos now started being used in, uh, in education in Bulgaria. Bulgarian schools through one of the leading publishers. They use it in the digital school books. So teachers take them, have a lecture, then explain, and then questions ask, and that's, that's the model of how they do. But this was before we, we started presenting as digital education. This is already about nine years ago. Um, I started um, researching about Dimitar Peshev because very little was known in Bulgaria about him. More was known about him outside at that time. This was about nine years ago. Who was Dimitar Peshev? He was born in 1894 to a well-off family in Kustindil, which at that time was right on the border with the Ottoman Empire and the historic area of Macedonia the period part of it, from where Salonika, Salonik, as you call it in Albanian, and the Aegean Sea is much nearer than the Black Sea. Like most Bulgarians, some would say even all Bulgarians of his generation, young Dimitar, his perspectives on life were shaped by the traumatic loss of territory, Macedonia, which remained outside the political borders of the newly independent Bulgaria. A loss which, we have to admit, that brought Bulgaria twice into the German orbit in the First World War, but then, crucially, in the Second World War, when Nazi Germany offered Bulgaria territory from the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, making Bulgaria a Nazi ally. Right before the start of the First World War, Dmitry Peshev studied languages in Salonika, including Ottoman Turkish. His talent for languages was put to good use shortly afterwards, during the hostilities in the First World War, when, as a young officer, he was attached to the army headquarters on the front line as an army interpreter. In the film, which you will see shortly, there is a very rare image of the young officer Dimitar Peshev clearly emotional posing in front of some orthodox frescoes, which had been taken over by the Bulgarian army in battle. After the First World War, Dmitry Peshev became a successful lawyer, a judge, a minister of justice, in the 1930s, he entered Sofia's parliament. He was elected twice as a deputy speaker of parliament. He was popular as an honest man, a man of integrity, even under the most challenging circumstances. In March 1943, Bulgaria, a Nazi ally, as Ambassador Gujev mentioned that, Bulgaria had signed the Axis in, in the winter of 1941. It was a full Nazi ally, Bulgaria planned to seal the fate of its Jewish population when the government decided to deport the Jews from the country to the camps in the east. Dmitry Peshev managed to stop that almost by accident. He heard through friends from Houston Deal about the plans to deport Jews from his hometown, from Houston Deal. He then tried several times to see the Prime Minister, but he did not succeed. After meeting with the Interior Minister, Peshev persuaded 43 government deputies to sign a letter against further anti-Jewish measures in Bulgaria. Even under pressure from the Prime Minister, who was furious at Peshev's letter, 30 of the deputies refused to withdraw their signatures, even under pressure from a very strong Prime Minister, who had the whole power. 30 of them still continued. 
the news was leaked, there was a much wider movement, the Orthodox Church got involved and the protest, etc. As a result, Pesci was dismissed, he lost his job as a vice chairman. But the deportation of Bulgarian Jews was halted. Why we made this film? We, we found his niece, who was still with us at that time, um, who you see in the film, and we, we we started talking to her about how she remembered her her uncle, and uh, she dedicated the rest of her life. She never married to that. They looked after after her uncle after after the very traumatic changes of 1944. Something I'm not going to talk about that because it's in the film. But why we made this film? Because I think it's really important. To, uh, something to, something very strange. Uh, very, very uh, straightforward, but also very controversial. The Holocaust was not studied in communist Bulgaria, where I grew up. The systematic extermination of millions of Jewish people was presented by my school teachers, and good teachers they were, but as a fight between fascists and anti-fascists. Even in death, ideology did not allow for dignity for the victims. They were only numbers without identity in remote camps somewhere far away from Bulgaria. Dimitri Peshev is still less known in his own country than outside. Yes, he was awarded posthumously the country's highest medal of Stara Planina in 1997. There is a modest museum in his house in Kustenville. There is a Peshev Bridge on Livingston Island in Antarctica. That's also thanks to the initiative of the former Foreign Minister Solomon Bassi, uh, who was traveling to Antarctica often and, and it was his idea to name it after Dimitri Peshev. There is a Dimitri Peshev Plaza in Washington, D.C., very close to the Bulgarian Embassy, I'm told. There is a boulevard in Israel named after him. He was awarded the title of Righteous Among the Nations by Israel. But his work is hardly studied in Bulgarian schools. This film, you'll see now, is, as far as I know, perhaps the only educational tool on this subject in Bulgaria. Perhaps, I'm, I'm guessing why that is, but Politicians usually prefer to see things black and white. But you, and especially the younger generations of this part of Europe, describe as the Western Balkans. You should know better than that. The life and work of Dimitri Peshev is essential in understanding the compromises and moral dilemmas we all fallible human beings have to make sometimes, especially when you face adversity in crisis, like what your nation was facing in 98-99. For instance, as an example, what Dimitri Peshev faced uh, in 1943, in the winter, and uh, winter in March of 1943. It helps to understand that story, telling that story, it's really important. It becomes even more important in the world we live in now. It helps to understand how a deputy speaker of a Nazi allied parliament could reverse his decision, his own decision, because he voted for the anti Semitic legislation as a deputy. Uh, as, a, as the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, he promoted it, probably because he had to, when he was second to the whole Parliament. So he reversed his decision and he became a rebel against his own government. At the height of a world war, with the strongest army just knocking on his door, but, but, but Bulgaria was not occupied, and he prompted real action to save real people's lives, more than 50,000 of them. But I mean, there it should be.